In this new series, I'd like to talk about various design patterns and how you can implement them in C++ or in fact in any language in general. In the first episode, let's talk about one of the most controversial and the most abused one, the singleton. Let's see how to make one and should we even make one at all. Singletons have pretty simple two requirements. There should be only one instance of a given class and the object should be globally available. The first requirement can be achieved by making both the constructor and the structor private. We also want to delete the assignment operators and copy and move constructors. Let's see on a sample class. Let's make a class widget. And if we want to make it a singleton, the first thing we need to do is hide those constructors and operators also a destructor, so no one will accidentally delete it. Here's our default constructor. Here's our copy constructor we explicitly deleted. Here's our move constructor we also want to explicitly delete it. And the same goes for operators. As you can see, there's no way to instantiate the object. To make it available, we need to create a static method which returns a reference to the object. This method should be public. Public, static, and it should return the reference to our object. Let's go to get in stance. In here, let's make a static instance object. And let's return it. As you can see, by returning an inner static object here, we ensure that it will be lazy loaded on first access and in fact in a thread safe way. This is what C++ guarantees us. If we want to make a generic singleton, because why not, we can use a template which should be the base of our class. Let's see how this template should be created. First start with a template class T, we define our singleton class. There we need to uh, hide all those constructors and operators. Just like we did before. Note that everything is protected, so we can call our singleton constructor from our derived classes. delete our operators so nobody for example try to copy anything and again let's make a public get instance method let's copy and paste that here but instead of widget we simply use class t and to make our widget in a singleton simply derive from the singleton template Got the actual equal sign. Now we just need to friend our singleton, unfortunately, so our widget constructor is available. So we just simply say that our singleton of the widget friend class can create our instances. To get the instance, we simply call widget equals widget get instance and done it builds remember to have the singleton template as a base i've seen pseudo singletons when a normally publicly constructible class is a parent of the singleton it doesn't really make sense in such cases because the class is globally constructible 
so you can have many instances of the class in addition to your singleton. Okay, so now we know how to create one, but the question remains, should we use singletons at all? My general advice is, don't use them unless absolutely necessary. Singletons have a very bad reputation and for good reasons. First, singletons are pretty much set in stone. You can't in an easy way substitute a singleton class or object for something else, which is extremely useful in testing. Second, they are globally available dependencies which are out of control. Dependencies should be provided to your objects. The object should not ask anything for dependencies. And that's exactly what happens in case of singleton. You are explicitly asking for an instance, which again, can cause problems, especially in testing. I've seen many singletons which have been created purely out of laziness. Someone simply didn't want to pass a dependency around, so a singleton was created. Don't be that person. Third point. They usually leave from the first usage to the end of the process. This might be a problem when they are used as a non-owning collection of objects. In these cases, we should always remember to move such stuff out of the singleton when a given object gets destroyed, simply because something somewhere might still use the singleton to access it. In general, singletons might have lifetime issues. But on the other hand, singletons can sometimes be useful. A classic example would be a, for example, logging facility or a registry of some sort. In each case, we should really think about if the class you want to make a singleton of really should be the only one globally available instance or not. If there's a reasonable way to avoid it, it's better not to have a singleton. To summarize, singletons are not inher inherently good or bad, they have their use cases, but they also have a lot of drawbacks. If you're fine with accepting those drawbacks and you think the singleton is the best tool for the job, you may guess, go ahead and use it. Just remember that singletons have their pros, but they also have large cons. So I hope you found this informative. I hope you know when and when not to use a singleton and how to properly make one. Remember to always use the best tool for the job and never be lazy. Let me know what you think about the singletons. Do you think they are an absolute evil? Do you think they do have their use cases? Or do you simply don't care at all? See you in the next one. Peace.